to the show, Senator Tom Cotton. Hey, John, how are you? <laughs> Good. Uh, gentlemen uh, John, are you, are you, from Arkansas. Are you in Southern California, or are you out in, uh, what is it, Emporia, Kansas? Uh, yes, very close to Emporia, Kansas, but no, I am uh, right now in Hughes' studio in Southern California. Yeah, that's correct. That, right. That's that's correct. No cows within any eyesight. Yeah, no, there's no cows here. No, no, no cows here, and too many Democrats. Uh, a lot more Republicans in Kansas like there are in Arkansas. Uh, good conservative people. So, Senator Cotton, I um, have been in a number of state of States of the Union. Uh, we had your West Point colleague, uh, Mike Pompeo from Kansas, on last hour. I'm going to ask you a couple of the same questions I asked him to get the idea from the perspective of the Senate side of the aisle as opposed to from the House side of the aisle. What did you think the mood was on the floor last night there in, in, um, uh, when the president gave his speech? Well, the mood on the Republican side certainly was deja vu all over again. The president simply doesn't get the message that the voters, uh, certainly in Arkansas, but I believe all across America, sent to him last fall, a message that he himself they were, said they were going to send. He said just a few weeks before the election that his policies were on the ballot, every single one of them, and the American people repudiated his policies in a historic election, yet he simply continues to pursue big government tax and spend policies that have caused wages to fall and hurt so many working families in Arkansas and all across our country. What annoyed you the most that he said last night? I, I know, say, I know that's probably, I know there's probably a large group of the, things to choose from, but, but what do you think it was? A target-rich environment, to be sure. Uh, it's actually I, maybe what he didn't say. He, Tar- did not, he did not use the words Al Qaeda in the entire speech, um, and in fact, he claimed victories or success or at least progress on matters that were actually defeats when it comes to keeping America safe. You know his continued concessions to Iran as they continue to move towards a nuclear weapon. He said that they're stopping the progress of the Islamic State in Iraq, which is true in some cases, but not true across the country. And more importantly, we're doing nothing to stop the Islamic State in Syria, the base of their strength and where they're growing stronger every single day. He celebrated normalizing relations with Cuba, for which he had received nothing in return. So the president seems to be living in a world that he wishes existed, but in fact did not exist. And I'm afraid that both our allies and our adversaries around the world recognize that. Did did you Senate Republicans uh, join the House Republicans in their retreat last week, or are you having a separate retreat? Yes, sir. We joined uh, the House Republicans for the first day and a half of their conference. Okay. So in theory... I prefer, I, prefer not, I prefer not to call it a retreat. I only like to advance. Advance. Yes, uh, that would be the West Point in you, I'm sure. Uh, so after that, now, uh, it, usually in the House or the Senate, uh, you start the year, everybody gets sworn in, you assign committees, you have a retreat, uh, well, sorry, you have an, an off-site meeting, uh, and the president gives the State of the Union, and then that's really kind of when the gun goes off and things start. What is the agenda for the Senate Republicans uh, uh, for the first time? Is that Because the House Republicans have had their own agenda and been driving it, and we knew Harry Reid wasn't going to do anything. But that's not the case now. Mitch McConnell is the majority leader. What is the agenda for the Senate Republicans, newly minted Senate Republicans, of which you are a major part of that majority, what made that majority um, as we start uh, this year? John, our agenda, certainly my agenda, are the issues on which I campaign. Uh, put simply, getting America back to work and keeping America safe. Uh, I have been somewhat you know, surprised inside the Senate just how you know, um, out of shape, if you will, out of uh, mid-season form, senators on both sides of the aisle are when it comes to basic legislating. We, we may cast more am- am- votes on amendments through the end of this week than the Senate cast in all of the la- last two years under Harry Reid. I mean, that's a remarkable thing. In the first two weeks under new Republican leadership, the Senate will cast more votes on amendments than they cast in the entire two years of Harry Reid's uh, tenure as majority leader over the 2013-2014. Uh, so there's a lot of surprise, I think, on both sides of the aisle that we're actually doing the people's business. Right now, we're trying to expedite the permitting and construction of the Keystone Pipeline, which will create tens of thousands of jobs and stand with our allies in Canada to the north, uh, also help 
uh, the American consumer and energy costs. Then we're going to move on, I think, to national security bills. We've got uh, bills that would tighten sanctions on Iran before they can obtain nuclear weapons capability that would stop the president from releasing more dangerous terrorists from Guantanamo Bay before they can go, so they can go back to the battlefield. And then ultimately, as you know, we'll get into uh, the budgeting uh, season and start passing sp spending bills. And that's where I believe we can really put some constraints on the president's unilateral actions. Do you think, I know, it, when a legislative body does nothing, and we know that Harry Reid's Senate did absolutely nothing, he sat on the ball hoping that the clock would run out and he would still have the ball. But he sat on the ball, the clock ran out, he didn't have the ball. The, the ball got handed over to Republicans now. But my experience has been legislators on both sides, they want to legislate. They really don't want to just sit on the ball. They really don't want to just sit on the bench. They want to do things. Are you sensing anything with your Democratic colleagues that that maybe, you know, and I remember when when Boehner took over from Pelosi, a number of Democrats came up and said, you know, you guys are actually running this place better than we did. Is it is there any sense from that from your Democratic colleagues in the Senate, in the Senate, Senator Tom Cotton? Yes, John. Several of the Democratic senators have remarked privately to us uh, that they are very happy to be doing the people's business again, to be offering their amendments, even if their amendments are defeated. Uh, sometimes we've passed Democratic amendments, though, in the last two weeks. But they want to do the people's business. None of us ran and got elected simply to come and sit in the Senate. At least I hope none of us did. Uh, and that's what the Senate, well, that's what the House needs to do. We need to cast our votes. We need to have the courage of our convictions to vote on the principles on which we campaigned. And if that's not the will of the Congress, so be it. If the president vetoes it, so be it. If we're not passing legislation, at least we're framing the public debate for the next election so the American people will have a choice in 2016, not only for Congress, but obviously for the presidency as well. Will there be enough of them willing to stand up to the president and not just vote differently than him, but perhaps even override him? It's my theory that a lot of what the president was trying to accomplish last night was to get enough, get 34 Democrats in the Senate to basically say, I'll sustain your vetoes. Uh, yeah, I mean, the, the president threatened Congress last night more than he threatened Iran or any other Se enemy seven, I counted seven veto threats myself. But. Yeah, um, and I think he is probably trying to send a message to a lot of the Democrats in the Senate uh, in particular, but also the House, who would rather listen to the people who elected them than listen to uh, the liberal president of their own party. Uh, and that's really going to be a question for those Democratic senators and congressmen. When the chips are down and they've voted for legislation and they have to vote to override a veto, do they stand with the people they serve or do they stand with a liberal lame duck president? In the last 30 seconds here, um, Tom, Senator Tom Cotton, you've been in the House uh, for a term and now you're, you're in the Senate. Difference between the Senate and the House so far? The, the Senate, it is fair to say, moves uh, slowly in all matters, not just legislation. <laughs> it is the uh, more deliberative body, and uh, we certainly are taking everything in a measured approach. But, you know, that's good. Uh, Congress, like all human beings, maybe more so than most, can make mistakes. So it's good to move slowly and deliberately. The saucer that cools the cup of coffee, and I do think that is the way the founders intended it. Senator Tom Cotton, at Sen Tom Cotton, is his Twitter handle. Thank you, America. John Campbell filling in for you. I will.